So today we're gonna to walk through the marketing table templates that Google Sheets offers in its new tables feature. So first up, we have the content tracker, then the campaign tracker, and campaign results. And so I'm gonna walk you guys through these templates as well as some tips and tricks on how to use these and some of the cool new features of the tables feature that Google just released. If you do not have tables yet available in your Google Sheets, and so you'll know if you do not see tables here under insert, then make sure to check out the link in the description below to download this Google Sheet into your drive so that way you can start using tables today. All right, so let's go ahead and jump right in. So first of all, I'm gonna walk you through these three templates, and then I'm gonna show you the cool new group by view in the tables and show you how to add and use those. And then finally, I'm going to wrap it up by showing you how to modify these column types and use this for your own project. So let's go ahead and look at content tracker first. And so this allows you to put in your content name here and then add the type of marketing that it is and then put any details here as well. And then you can sign it to an owner using the name smart chip or I'll show you how to change this to text right here. And you can change it to text if you'd rather not actually tag them in the smart chip. You can select a status here and then the post date, and you can attach a file here using the smart chip as well. And then finally, you can add notes there. Next up, we have the campaign tracker, and so you can put the campaign name right in here. You can select the type, and I'll show you again how to modify those. And the same thing here, you can add an owner using smart chip, the status dropdown, start and end date, and again, files and notes. And then finally, for campaign results, the campaign name here, the status, you can enter the cost, number of impressions, and number of conversions, and then put it in a next steps for that, and then a notes there as well. All right, so if you're paying attention, you kind of already saw how to do this group by, but I'm gonna walk you through in a little more detail. So first of all, I'm gonna show you how to delete this, which is, by the way, how to delete them. And so if you open it, then you delete view. And so to start from scratch, you can do a group by either by clicking on this column and then do group by column, or you can do it from here, click create group by view, and then select the column that you wanna group by, and then you'll see it group just like that. And so right now we only have one in each of these, so it doesn't look too spectacular or useful. But if we add some more in here, we can take a look at what that looks like. And so it says your group is out of sync. And so if we just click refresh, then it throws them back in the right spots. And let's say we were going ahead and let's actually change this to published and published. Then we can click refresh and they move to the correct section. So this is a pretty cool and big feature of tables that I think we're all gonna love. Um, we've We've been wanting this for a long time and not able to really get what we wanted. And so this is a pretty awesome thing here. So this is kind of a hybrid of the filter view that we've had. And so when you do this group by, you can also select if you only want, for example, certain types. Um, you can have that show up like that and do whatever filters you want. And then you can save that view and then it's accessible, you can exit out from there and then come back and you'll see your same results just like you left them. So we can go ahead and exit that view for now. Next, let's look at how to use the filter. So as you can see, we do not have a filter on here. So you can actually add a filter over here and it changes that into the filter and then it kind of, uh, makes that column menu over here. So it's up to you which way you like to do that, or we can delete that filter. And you can still use it just straight from here by doing filter column. And so that allows you to uh, filter, and we could say, get rid of blank, and pause, suspended, under review, and then just see those just like that. And then we can reset it again, just like normal. And then let's look at 
changing the header background. So you can modify it by doing one of their custom um, or standard, I guess, table colors here. And so it looks new from what they've had in the past. So I think they, they were pretty proud of rolling these out. And so let's look at um, putting a little border in between there, just like that. So you can actually change the color from out here um, in this color background here. But one thing to note is if you do that and you try to go back and change it from here, it won't do anything. So if you do that, make sure to select this again and do reset, and then it'll be sync back to what it was originally, just like that. So next, let's look at inserting rows and columns, and then I'll circle back around and go a little more in depth on this um, column type. So inserting columns and rows is pretty easy. You can insert a column anywhere in here just like this. Insert one right or left. Um, so that's pretty easy. I'm going to show you how to rename these columns real quick. Um, column like that. My terrible typing here. One thing to note is you cannot leave it blank. It has to have a value. So that's one thing to keep in mind as you go. And then one thing as we'll see over here, if I type something in here, new call for example, it doesn't do anything, but if I do this next to the table, it'll go ahead and absorb it. And so just be careful if you have data that you do not want to be part of the table that you make it at least one column over. And then you can insert rows like you've always done um, somewhere in here. You can just go to the bottom and add 10 new rows and the table automatically expands to include those new rows. So as long as it's next to it on the bottom or on the right or left hand side, then it automatically incorporates it into the table. So that's pretty nice there, just as long as you don't accidentally make a mistake on that. So next, let's look at these column types. And so let me go ahead and add a new column here and we'll just call this sample. And so one thing you notice is that there's nothing in this column at the moment, but there's stuff filling all these columns and these are called placeholders. And so if we go to column type, um, there's nothing here right now. If we go over here, you can see there's show placeholders. So currently this has none as far as column type selected. Now, if we go to text there, then now we see that show placeholders. So if you don't have a type selected, you can't do a placeholder, but as soon as you select a type, then it automatically shows up. And so what this does is it just literally shows whatever's in the column header when you do text. Now, if you select one of the other ones, and we'll just kind of quickly run through these. So number, it shows like that. You can change to percent. So one thing to note here is if you double click and then try to type in, it enters as a number, not a percent. So if you double click, make sure you add the percent. Otherwise, if you just start typing, you'll see that percent symbol get tacked on and then it's correct when you put it in. So just a quick note on percentages and then currency is straightforward like it always is. And one thing you notice too is the icon there next to it changes, which is pretty sweet. So we've already seen the text one. So let's go on to date. So when you do a date, it automatically adds that drop down view. So that's pretty slick. And then date time, unfortunately they don't have the time selection yet so you will still have to enter that in manually and then time here um, like normal you can enter in like this um, and it works just fine and then we can do drop downs and so drop downs work pretty much the same so you can add them here you can edit them add the options you want do the colors one thing to note under advanced options as always you can go back to arrow the one thing they did get rid of is you can't refuse options that don't match. And so that's, to me, is a little confusing why they would do that. Um, maybe they have a reason here, um, but you can technically enter stuff that you don't have in the drop down. So for me, that's not a favorable thing, but that's what they've done for now. So we'll see if that changes. Next, we got checkbox. And so that's pretty straightforward, like checkboxes. And of course, smart chips. So I don't know if you've messed with smart chips before, but people, you can tag people in it. Uh, files, you can attach files. Finance to get like stock prices. Uh, place, which is kind of like a maps. Smart chip and then ratings. Um, and so let me just show you ratings. If you haven't seen those, they're kind of different. And so then you can select a number there like that. So that's how those work. So let me just change it back to that. And so if you change it, 
between a couple, like here it's showing numbers. If we do checkbox and then go to um, text, you'll see it has faults. And so if you change those types, you may just have to delete out what's in them just to reset them. All right, so to wrap this up, I'm just gonna show you how to reference a table in formulas. And so we'll just go ahead and pick these statuses from here and do a count on those, pretty straightforward. So with that, uh, you can name tables. And so this is kind of like a name range. And so we could just call this tracker if we want or content tracker like that. Um, one thing to note is you cannot have a space in the name. It'll give you an error. Also says you can't start with a digit. So just keep that in mind. So you can name it however you want, content tracker if you want. And then we'll go ahead and add a new sheet and then we'll just reference that. So maybe we'll get our unique list. And so we can start typing in that table name. And then you can see this is referring to the entire table um, or all, which is, I don't know if those have much difference. I know this one you can use in, in query and stuff like that. So uh, I'll get more into that in my full video. But for now, let's just go to status and get our unique statuses. And let's just use count ifs as an example here. And so we'll do content tracker again and status and then just count up our comparison to our column A there. So it gives us a quick count. And so this works across um, all the formulas I've tested so far. So um, all the ifs ones, sum count, average ifs. Uh, it works in filter um, and then query. You can just use, um, I believe, either of these. Let me just check it here while we're at it. And then you'll be a guinea pig along with me. So content tracker. Let's just see if that works. Um, sure enough, it does. So. Um, you can do that, or I think you can do hashtag all, and then just like that. I guess that, oh, that's the, that includes the headers. Well, there you go. That's the difference. So um, those all work in there in the different formulas, and so then you can reference the table data that way um, a little more dynamically, and that will capture if you add more stuff to the table. So that is it for today's video on the marketing table templates in Google Sheets. I do have videos on the other templates they have available. So again, if you do not have tables yet in your Google Sheets, make sure to check those out so you can download those template files. So that way you can have all the templates at least in your Google Sheets. So that way you can start using it right away and be up to speed when you start creating them from scratch. So as always, make sure to check out my other videos on both Google Sheets and App Script. If this video is helpful for you, be sure to like and subscribe. And I'd just like to ask you to drop a comment because Tables is new, just rolled out. I just found it in my Google Sheet um, earlier today, which is why I'm pu pushing out these videos for you guys. So let me know if you've started using it, what your notes, comments are, what you most like about it, what you least like about it, or if you just even haven't gotten it yet. So thanks for watching and have a great day.